Welcome back. My name is Dominic. This is Max Level EDC, and today we're going to talk about the state of the multiverse. And all I got to say is, people are literally losing their minds. So before we get into the clown fiesta, let's start with recapping what tools have come out since the beginning of the year. Maybe this is the first time you're following up, you haven't looked into anything relating to multi-tools. Well, this is going to be a great resource for you to figure out what's going on. Number one, at the beginning of the year, we had a big surprise from Victorinox. They released a series of their Swiss tools with a pocket clip and a one-handed opening blade. It was not something that we expected, but it's really something that I think a lot of people are enjoying. It's a bit expensive, but based on the fact that everything has gone up, maybe less so than it would have been in 2021 or 2020. So something to check out. The reviews for it so far have been really good. I haven't had a chance to put my hands on it, but I do plan on doing so before the end of the year. All right, what came in after was the SOG Flash MT. Now, initially I was quite excited about this. I did get a chance to put my hands on it. Fair disclosure here, I did return that tool and it's not that it was necessarily bad, it's that I just didn't need another tool that was as similar to the scale tool as it was. And I probably would have kept it, except that the plier head does not use the better opening ratio like the power pint does. And uh, I hate assisted blades, is what it comes down to. For me, that was the reasons why I ended up returning the tool. But we're still seeing feedback. We'll check in at the end of the year and see how people feel about it over a longer period of time. And then, of course, the third tool to come out, which is kind of a big deal, at least it was for me, was the Gerber Dual Force. Now, I don't think it's going to be a tool for everyone. This is very much uh, one catered to tradesmen's tradesmen or someone who has a very specific purpose relating to um, adjusting fasteners and so on. Very, very neat. I did a review on it, and the jury's still out on whether it will hold up to the kind of abuse that someone's going to put it through. So only time will tell. But that's kind of where we sit. Those are the available tools that have just come out, with a couple exceptions. Um, nothing like truly mind-blowing just yet. We're still waiting on the GOAT tool to come out some point this year. That's something that should be looked forward to. That's a modular multi-tool. But until that does, we're pretty much in a holding pattern. Except, I got contacted by a follower a few days ago, and they pointed me in the direction of eBay. They're like, you should go check this out, and I did. And little did I know, but the Leatherman Bit Kits that are used it in pretty much all of their tools, most of the tools, um, is completely sold out. Not just on their website, but literally everywhere. And if you go to eBay right now, it's going to cost you like $80 to $150. I'm not even joking. To get a pair of complete bit kits like these things right here. People have ha must be losing their minds. And it's not that they're just people just putting it up and no one's buying it. I did some searching and it looks like the... Some of these auctions are finishing off at $80 to $100. Okay, think about it this way. If for some reason these bit kits were actually getting discontinued, would you want to invest in a platform that doesn't have any sustainability? No. It, you know, and you'd be, no, no. You'd be better off either getting a 3D printed part for just 30 bucks, which by the way, converts your, uh, Leatherman Wave to using a full-size quarter inch, or maybe a different, different multi-tool entirely. I mean, the Leatherman Free P4, for all the negatives we've talked about, has a dedicated tool set that isn't going anywhere, right? So this is kind of, this whole experience is making me rethink the idea of depending on Leatherman for thinking ahead. Because if you have a variety of tools that depend on these bit kits, for being useful, how could you have let them go out of stock? You should have been ordering them two years ago, like the end of 2020, right? So that you could guarantee they stay in stock because they matter. Otherwise, new releases 
they kind of it kind of dampens them a little bit because they're like well i could get that but i can't get the bit kit so it it loses a lot of its functionality and that brings up a brand new release that we just had a couple of days ago by leatherman and this is and this is kind of what i expected because everyone was so excited thinking it was a new multi-tool we have a clown car i mean a multi-color topo um collaboration skeletal that no one wanted uh I guess if you love your colored uh, skeletals, you know, here's another one for you. Um, it's neat to know that Leatherman is capable of making a collaboration with another company. I think that part's great, but I think paying a hundred dollars for a with it for a 420 HC variant and partially serrated, which is ten dollars more than the 154 CM equivalent doesn't feel very good to me. Now that's me personally. I think it's a cool collaboration in, in some ways. But once again, one of the biggest reasons to buy the Skeletal is because with the bit kit, you now have an, a very compact, yet very functional screwdriver and plier you know, system. You can't buy the, the bit kit though. In fact, the bit kit supposedly is now worth more than that Skeletal. I mean, how insane is this? But anyway, what I want to do a little bit here is throw some ration, rational thought back into the universe. Don't buy bit kits for a hundred bucks. They're going to come back. Okay, Leatherman is going to get them back in stock. They have future tools in mind when they think about having those bit kits. They have current ones, they have past ones. They're coming back. I think it's embarrassing that they didn't think this through well enough that when they hit a low stock, they didn't go, oh, maybe we should order some more instead of making this colorful clown car multi-tool. But, you know, I'm not running Leatherman. I have no idea what they're dealing with as far as supply chain. And I'm sure that's the biggest reason that they're doing it because these bit kits are not made in the US. That I can tell you 100%. Um, it's possible that the plastic piece is, but these bits and the, the information isn't, confirmed 100%, but I believe these bits are made in the same places that they make the actual bit holders, and that is, I believe, in Mexico. Not 100% sure. They're very, very, like, hush-hush about where these things come from, but the bit holders, like, from the Wave, they don't actually, they're not actually made in the United States. They're a component that needs to be sourced elsewhere and then come in. Um, yeah, so... I'm not, I know, I don't understand what Leatherman's doing. I really don't. Like, why do you keep releasing new tools that are different colorways and wasting all those resources when there's some real logistical problems that need to be addressed? This should never, ever have gone out of stock. Ever. Like, it's just weird that you let that happen. And it wasn't just like one place. I mean, you knew it was coming because all the other distributors ran out almost at the same time. So I'm not sure what you're waiting on. If it's a lot simpler to make a Leatherman bit than it is to make a, a truly complicated multi-tool. So I, I'm not I'm not sure I understand. And I, I just just something about these bit bit kits. These are incredibly compact and very versatile. They're they're great for that purpose. But they are much much softer than a true quarter inch hex bit. They are much more expensive than those as well. And the availability of the precision bits, the four millimeter bits are increasing, right? We're seeing them show up in stores more often. I'm starting to see them in Home Depot, in Lowe's, and all these other places, electronic stores. So it is far easier to replace a four millimeter bit than it is with the Leatherman bit, right? There's one source for it. The same thing is, is more true for the quarter inch hex bit. You can find that practically everywhere. So it begs the question, if you could, if you could improve the platforms and actually have a full quarter inch hex bit, why wouldn't you do that? This is a 3D printed part and it, I think it cost me 25 bucks and it even has a holder for the precision driver, in fact. Um, but 
this 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 is just done done by somebody who who wanted to do it. I mean, imagine if Leatherman decided to do this. And this, by the way, is made in the United States because it's actually three D printed at a facility right here in the U.S. They could do that. All this takes is, by the way, a little bit of a magnet, and now you have a full quarter inch hex bit holder. So it's possible. I mean, other uh, designers have been doing it, so maybe it's time to do that. Or maybe it's time to reconsider the concept of, you know, a multi-tool with bits because you're carrying so much at that point. It's something that I've had to think of a little bit as well. So that's kind of the state of things as we sit right now. Kind of curious to see what you guys think. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon.